Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over how you can land a cybersecurity job as a military veteran. Now I got out of the military a while back, and this is everything that I wish I had known and would have sped up. Number one, me landing a cybersecurity role, and number two, also increasing my pay exponentially. If you have military experience, you already have a cybersecurity mindset which you may or may not realize, you do understand security. The principles are basically the same. The first step and something that is the hardest step but no one really talks about is number one, you need to prepare your mindset for leaving. I remember when I was getting out, people would tell me that it was a dog eat dog world and that I wasn't going to get a job. And a lot of times they will also throw promotions at you and bonuses. And this is is there are an insane amount of opportunities so there's no reason to have anxiety when getting out of the military no matter what your role was within the military or what branch of the military that you worked whether it was in a computer specialty or not a computer specialty employers love to hire veterans because number one they're trained and easy to train which leads me to the second aspect is people aren't really trained. And so that may take a while to adjust to the wild west of the civilian world. Make a decision that you're going to leave. So the next step is to really explore what exactly you want to do within cybersecurity. Because you're in the military, I strongly suggest just staying within the federal space, meaning the DOD is part of the federal government. There's also Homeland Security, so things like the FBI, things like CISA. For the DOD, there is DISA, or Defense Information System Agency. There's also the Department of Energy and all of those roles. There's an insane amount of agencies that you can work with that absolutely love veterans. It 100% is a club, so if you have military experience and you talk that lingo, you're already in that club. I suggesting with the federal space, and that's what I'm going to talk about the rest of the video. Now, there are other spaces that are huge too, such as banking. Chase Bank loves to hire veterans. There's also healthcare. There's universities, so universities also need security. But the easiest to transition out of the military would be the Department of Defense. Within the federal space, there are two different, I guess, types of jobs. The first one is GS, or government service roles, and these can be found on usajobs.gov. There is also federal private contractors, and most of these can be found on clearancejobs.com. So there are pros and cons to each one of these. For usagov, usajobs.gov, basically you can never get fired. While I'm sure there are furloughs, chances are you're not going to get fired or leave. So there is that added security. Some cons, and which is why I don't do it, but that doesn't mean you can't, is you don't get paid as much as you would as a federal contractor. But the benefits as a government employee are way better. Another thing is that when you work for the government in a GS type of role instead of a contractor role, is you also get a lot of politics that go along with it. And I just honestly couldn't, I just didn't want to deal with the politics that go into having a government job. And so I always stayed with federal contracting for several reasons. You might be, the first reason is it usually pays a lot more. Not always, but a lot of the time it does pay more. And if it doesn't pay more, you should find a different contract. The next reason is I only do the task that I'm hired for, and so I'm not allowed to do more than what I was hired for. So you never work more than 40 hours a week. I know some industries like consulting and things like that, it's like super stressful and they suggest you work more than 40 hours, not in federal contracting. Those are the two main things. Now within this, there are cybersecurity roles, and there are three main types of cybersecurity roles. The first type is management. So management, if you were like an E5 or above, you probably could land a management type of role. Next, you have governance, risk, and compliance. The federal government is all about compliance. And there are tons and tons of compliance roles within the DOD. The next types of roles are technical, and in technical roles, there are tons and tons of technical roles also in the DoD. I do have a video talking about GRC versus technical right here. I'll link it. But 
Each one has one of the pros. I've worked in both GRC and the technical side, and it just depends on where you're at. GRC is very boring, but technical roles within the federal government tend to be very interesting. It just depends on what you want to do. And also at every agency, it is different. For instance, if you work at Defense Information System Agency, that's basically the ISP for the entire DOD. And so there you would get to work with much more interesting technologies than you would if you were working at some random army site in the middle of nowhere. So keep in mind, not all agencies are the same. Go to USA Jobs, you can go to Clarence Jobs, explore the cybersecurity roles, you can do a filter for it. The next is you're going to want to get 8570 certified or 8140 now that it is. So the federal government is very big on certifications. Now, I know they just got rid of the degree requirement for government jobs, but they didn't get rid of the certification requirements for the jobs. You have to have a security plus just to get an interview and to get hired. And if you don't get that certification within a, a certain period of time, you will 100% lose your job. It's best just to get it before now that you are transitioning out or thinking about it as it will help you get interviews. And because you already have military experience, and if you get that Security Plus, you're going to be solid. Now, another really big certificate that will put you ahead of a lot of people is getting the CISP or CISSP. This is hard to do if you don't have any experience because it's not, it's not really an easy test or a beginner level test. But if you are able to get this certificate, you can definitely qualify yourself for really high level positions. I don't have it, and so I'm actually not qualified and I can't get hired into certain roles within the federal government, even though I'm able to solve problems and I understand it. I have a master's degree in cybersecurity, but they really want the CISP. So the CISP is actually worth more than a master's degree in cybersecurity to the federal government. Keep that in mind. So now that you are working towards this, I really suggest when trying to change, when getting out of the military, going into cybersecurity is to go through a training program. Because you are military, you have a lot of free programs available to you along with your GI Bill or your 9-11 Bill. So I'm going to talk about some of those. So these often change. I'll put a link below to some of these, but basically there is Purdue University Northwest and there's the Cybersecurity Workforce Certification Training, and this is absolutely free. So if you are in the military right now and transitioning out or you are trying to get into cybersecurity, this is a great place to start that will teach you the essentials. They have an, an AI or machine learning in cybersecurity course, Python essentials. They have IoT and hardware security, Linux, computer forensics, and it's completely free. Uh, and this will basically give you the foundations and you don't have to use your GI Bill to get those foundations. There is also the Microsoft Software and Systems Academy, and I believe they also have a cybersecurity one if you have one year of IT experience. But these two, two resources are really good if you wanted to do that. Now, as for do you need a cybersecurity degree to work in cybersecurity, especially at the federal level, the answer is no. You don't need to have a cybersecurity degree, but the government does really like degrees, right? So it doesn't mean, I know they just passed a White House rule saying that you don't need degrees. They probably still filter people who have degrees versus who don't have degrees. Like human, you have to get past human resources. I can guarantee you that they love to see those certifications. So if you get the CompTIA Security Plus or the CISP, you're going to be really well set along with these free training programs you can go through. Now, for getting your degree, what do I suggest? So I actually went to Western Governors University and I got a master's in cybersecurity and I completed it within six months. Now, the reason I did that was because I lollygagged like the other two and a half years doing random things, to be honest. And I didn't really use that to the full advantage. So you can go to WGU. It gets the job done. It is a cybersecurity degree. Is it the best cybersecurity training in the world? No. But most colleges don't really provide the best cybersecurity training in the world. Honestly, a lot of it is just very theoretical. It has no real world application, in which case most people will quit. Do you really want to spend your time in a classroom? 
Now, the other option for a cybersecurity degree is the SANS degree. And because it's free for you and you get paid, this has really good training that I wish I had gone through. They have a bachelor's and a master's, and those GAIAC certifications are very valuable. And that training is really good in it. You get that training included in the program. So if you want the best cybersecurity training, I would go with SANS, to be honest, and I wish I had done that. But WGU is still a good choice. Now, you could also, what I wish I had done, is you could also go overseas and use your GI Bill, and then you get paid like a certain amount of money. And you could live in a foreign country, like Italy or France, and you could just have a blast with your GI Bill. There are also lots of programs you could do. I always wanted to learn massage, and so I could use my GI bill for something like that just because I wanted to learn it for fun and then I could have gotten the WGU degree still because that was only like six months use your GI bill to have a lot of fun yeah now that you have gone through and you've gone through training you've decided what type of role you want you've decided if you want a government job or a contractor job you don't have to decide. Like sometimes what people will do is that they will get a contractor role and then wait for that government role. Some agencies only hire their contractors. So keep that in mind. A contractor is a door in the foot. Yes, you don't have to choose either or. You get a government job and you hate it. I've seen people move over to the contractor. If you get a government service job, GS job, and then hate it, you can always move to the contractor role. I have seen that because some people just want to go to work, do their task, and then leave. They don't want to deal with all of this political craziness. The next thing that you're going to want to do now that you have really gotten your plan, you've gotten your certifications, you've gone through some training, and you have the basics, you're going to want to make sure your resume is extremely specific to a job that you are wanting. Don't try to just go for a cybersecurity role. When you were exploring different types of roles, I'm sure that you saw some that kept on repeating. For instance, if you want to become, say, an information system security officer, you want to make sure your resume is geared toward that one job. And you want to make sure it shows how you are qualified. So if you don't have any experience being an ISSO, you have to gain experience. And now the government is skills-based, which is great because you can do projects to show that you have those skills for that specific job that you're looking for, which is amazing. Now, for the resume aspect, the one that you apply for e.gov versus clearance job, so federal contractor versus government employee, are going to be completely different. For the government employee one, you have a thing called a CV, and this is going to be like four to five pages documenting everything that you have ever done. That is related to the job. So you have to make sure that it looks relevant to the role that you're in. Now, for the federal contractor side, your resume shouldn't be more than one to two pages at most, and it should be brief, and it should show your accomplishments, and it really shouldn't go into everything that you have ever done. They're two very separate. If you apply to the government with your federal contractor short, brief, private sector resume, you will 100% probably not get past human resources for USA jobs. They're very specific on how your resume or CV needs to be formatted to land a federal role within cybersecurity. The next thing that you are going to want to do once you land this job and start getting interviews is when you get offers and you will start to get offers within cybersecurity, don't worry, is you're going to want to negotiate. Now, I see a lot of veterans and people within really everyone, they don't negotiate and they just accept the first offer. Now, I have multiple times negotiated $30,000 more than what I have been offered for both government jobs and federal contractor jobs, not just one or the other. So I just never accept my the first offer that is given to me. Just keep that in mind and really know your worth, right? So this is your time that you're trading for money. You should maximize this as much as possible. I remember I was working with someone and all I did is I told him not to accept the first offer and he actually was able to negotiate just from that one piece of advice, $30,000. So another thing that I see a big mistake when negotiating is you think 
because you're getting out of the military or you're used to different field that doesn't pay as much, you think 60, 70, 80,000 is a lot of money. The thing is, it's not a lot of money. I remember my goal when getting out of the army was to make $35,000 in IT. Now that is so low, even seven years ago, 35,000 was my goal. In reality, I could have, looking back, made six figures right out of the military as I was a 25 Bravo or IT specialist. And why not just go and make six figures right at the front, right? Like all you have to do is ask and then know your worth and then don't be so desperate to work in the field that you just accept anything. Just remember to always negotiate, never accept the first offer. And also everything is negotiable from the pay to, to remote work to how much vacation you get, holidays and all of that. Cybersecurity is extremely high in demand. And the federal government and contractors usually don't give you a bonus. So in the private sector, they usually give you bonuses. Make sure to mention that that in the private sector, you would make this much plus all of these bonuses that comes along. And so you may accept a little bit less pay, but maybe you try to negotiate more vacation time or something like that. Do, do you need a degree to land a role in cybersecurity? The answer is no. You don't see a degree to land a role in cybersecurity, especially if you're a military veteran. Oftentimes, military experience will replace a degree requirement. However, if you're going to work for a federal agency, what you do need is a cybersecurity certification. So that can be CompTIA Security Plus, definitely CompTIA Security Plus. And if you really want to make yourself a beast, get the CISSP. And I 100% believe that you can land a cybersecurity role, especially if you have military experience and you stay within the federal space. So you may be wondering, what if you never land a role in tech or anything like that? If you put in all of this work, you get the certifications, you do the, the skills-based training, you think about getting a degree, you're going to land a role. Like you're putting in the work and if everything fails in life, you can find a help desk job. So that is honestly the worst case scenario. And help desk pays good, sixty to $70,000 within the federal space. Security pays a lot more than that. There are apprenticeships that you can go. And this also just changes throughout the time. You can do a, cool, a quick Google search for cybersecurity apprenticeships for military veterans. And a lot will come up. They, they change periodically. That is my guide for a military veteran to land a cybersecurity career. Now, if you have any questions, leave the comment below. And also, I do have a totally free training below that walks you through step by step on how to land a cybersecurity role within GovTech. Make sure to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Bye.